Welcome back, everyone, to the deep dive. I again apologize for the, the giggles. It's just one of those days, I guess. Uh, so we are back, and we are moving on to topic number two, which is, and this could also be another contentious issue. Mm. We just talked about people that were getting fired, for example, based on our minimum wage discussion. So this is very interesting. Companies should do more to safeguard their employees' mental health. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's uh, that's a tough one, right? Um, so I think that, again, it's one of those things where, so I have this, I have this line, um, in my, in my book and I'm going to shamelessly plug it right now, but anyways, I wrote it and I was very happy with it. I wrote it, which is, um, the devil lurks in the ambiguity of polite language. And oh, I really like that sentence. I really like that sentence too. I'm yeah. going to write it down with my magic And so, pen. yeah. And this topic reminds me of that, right? Which is people hear mental health, and it's very popular these days to mm-hmm. care about mental health. I'm not sure how good we are at effectively actually helping it in some way, but we should like to talk about helping it. Definitely. It's a huge and buzzword. Yeah, it's definitely a buzz, right? And so as a result, you hear things like, oh, well, companies should definitely do more to safeguard, you know, their, their employees' mental health. And that sounds good, right? It does. But it's ambiguous, it's not entirely clear what is meant by that. Mm-hmm. And we just hear it and we go, oh, well, mental health is good. Companies, especially if you're, you know, um, already somewhat opposed to how certain employees are treated at certain jobs by certain companies, right? You're immediately going to go, oh, well, they should absolutely do more, right? And and you may have a challenging job or a difficult job or just a very stressful job. And as a result, you know, you might be suffering as a result um, because of... Uh, uh, the workload or the nature of your work and your mental health will suffer. And so it's one of these things, again, where it's like, okay, well, your company should do more. And it's like, well, I guess, maybe, right? But it's like, well, what is the cause of your mental health, though, right? Problems. If, you, if you're having some mental stress, if you're having, you know, enough stress that's causing you to, to border into the realm of, you know, mental illness, then, and that's occurring as a result of things in your private life, in what sense should your company be responsible for that? I'm not saying they shouldn't be responsible for that. Okay. What I'm simply saying is that is that we have to have an honest conversation about which things the company really has control over. Of course. What they can actually do in some way. And honestly, to an extent, it's probably going to depend on the nature of your work that you do and who you are as far as a performer goes in your workplace. Let's say you were a high-quality performer, right? In the private sector, you're likely to be treated a lot better than other people are because you're like dynamite in a can, right? And as a result, um, right? And, and so as a result, you know, you might be more well to take, taken care of. You're an asset then. Mm-hmm. And so I would say from a business point of view, it's a strategic good to invest in people and, and make sure that they are doing good work because it makes them more productive, makes them more efficient. They're more likely to dedicate their career, their life to your to a career in your company, right? So it's a good business strategy, but I'm not so sure I would use the word they should do it, right? Um, I would probably do it if you had a, I had a great employee, right? I would probably do that, but I don't know if I would, without the specifics being clear as to where they are coming from, is the, is the nature of your job causing you Mm-hmm. Mental stress, that's totally different then because in some way, you should kind of expect there to be a balance, right? If the nature of your work is extremely stressful, like a good example would be law enforcement, right? Being a police officer is probably the most, one of the most stressful jobs you can have. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, air traffic controller is a very, uh, you know, very noteworthy one as well, is there are some things built into those jobs that, um, you know, or maybe there could be things built into those jobs that would naturally assist employees that are experiencing difficulties with their mental health purely by virtue of the occupation that they have, of which their employer or the company knows is stressful, right? In some way, maybe then it would make more sense for it to happen. So I think that it would need to be clarified. Is the source of your mental distress your personal life or is it your business or your, your actual work life? And what does that look like? How much should they be expected to invest and what are the arguments you can make that you would be deserving of it, right, in some sense? Okay. So what are your thoughts? I just said a whole bunch of things there, so I'm sorry. So go ahead. Okay. What you got? So What's for up? me, I yeah. think companies should actually mm-hmm. do more to safeguard their employees' mental health. Okay. Uh, as a mental health champion for where I work, also trained by the Mental Health uh, Commission of Canada mm-hmm. as a mental health first aider, uh, delivering workshops on mental health in the workplace, mm-hmm. and having studied psychology in, in university and why mental health and, and just understanding the mind itself is so important. Even if you're experiencing distress outside of work. So if I'm going through a divorce, 
which is obviously outside of my job, but I still bring myself with that mental anguish to mm-hmm. my job. I'm not functioning optimally or performing optimally either. Mm-hmm. And I'm not asking work to fix my divorce. Not at all. But what would be great is if there was maybe some sort of a benefit or a something I could tap into to assist me with that particular sort of an in issue. Mm-hmm. Um, or if, for example, if someone has passed away. Death is never easy. Mm-hmm. So for example, work might give me some time off as bereavement leave. Or they may have a, a program where you can contact a counselor, mm-hmm. for example. Because not everyone knows who you can reach out to. And it's sometimes hard. You're going through a divorce, you feel very confused. Or if there was a death mm-hmm. and you're going through all these stages of grief. And you don't know a number to call. It's kind of nice to know that the employer that I work for could provide me with something like that. Again, if I was working in an environment where it was high stress, I would really hope for sure that there was something in place mm-hmm. to safeguard that person's mental health because they may be exposed to certain things that not everyone in the general public would see or have to do. Mm-hmm. And that could be very taxing on a person, especially if they may not be, I don't know, equipped with the, the proper tools of how to deal with those issues. Uh, maybe they could build up on their resiliency or something like that. But having those options there, even just, for, again, a mom and pop shop I used to work for, if they were to provide like even like a half day of training or like a two hour session just on understanding mental health, because you're working with an employee and they're like acting the same way all of a sudden, then a couple of days later, they're a little bit disheveled. Now they're coming in and then you're like, yo man, Joe does not take a shower. What's his problem? And this is now like the signs you can start looking for, but not everyone without having that prior knowledge, because mm-hmm. hey, internet, they may not know mm-hmm. what to potentially look for in someone if that person is, is struggling with something. Mm. And again, I'm not trying to be some doctor and diagnosing the person, mm. but it's just also just knowing what signs and symptoms would even look like. So mm. a one hour, two hour training session being provided by your company could be helpful because you mm. have no idea. Or what if this company if they gave that training? I'd feel more well equipped going into there knowing that they have taken something to safeguard myself mm. and then me being able to assist my fellow colleagues mm. should they be going down some sort of slippery slope. So I, I think that they should. And, and you look at like those bigger companies, like what are they doing for people's like mental health? It doesn't have to be anything big either. Like, oh my God, there's a psychologist on site 24 seven for you. Some places do need that different uh, than some businesses, but even things like, oh, hey, the lunchroom has been updated, refreshed. There's now like a pool table in there mm-hmm. or we have like really cool furniture or there's like a TV where you can play video games. Like something that isn't just so sterile and so work, work, work all the time. Mm. And when they did studies on this, I think um, uh, I'll, I'll get into that one after. But when they did studies on certain places, like what makes a, a workplace psychologically health and safe, Guarding Minds at Work, I think, did the study. And they looked at 13 workplace factors. What does, if, all the, if these 13 factors existed in every work environment, that would make it a psychologically healthy and safe workplace. We know what physical safety is, obviously. Like I have p- t- p- protective gear on or something like that, or there's locks on the door. Mm-hmm. That is the physical portion, but we have to have it psychologically safe too. So things like recognition and respect or work-life balance, all of that they say needs to be there for someone to feel as if that place is is, is psychologically safe and helps guard their mental health. Because even something simple as, hey, Joe, thanks for going the extra mile today. Here's like a spontaneous award. Mm-hmm. Just that boost in, in their confidence that one day. It's like, man, I really feel like I'm appreciated and I'm part of this and I'm valued. And that helps that person maintain a great level of mental health. Because mm-hmm. when you go in, you do your job and say, oh, what are you doing here? And it feels like it's very thankless. That can affect you mm-hmm. over time. Crushing someone's spirit, right? It, so it doesn't have to be counseling or things like that it could just be hey we've updated there's a tv now you can play video games on your lunch break oh cool i can check out which is nice or there's fun colors in here or there's like a wellness room Mm -hmm. and i know that where i work it was a really big thing we took on as a project start back 2016 we wanted to change the way that our workplace looked and how it felt and so we started incorporating this a lot more now it's great we have wellness rooms we have things that like adult coloring just so you were able to go Mm -hmm. and work on yourself and it's really important we talk about self-care we talk about tips you can use because all that is really important to if this isn't good the rest of me isn't good and i shouldn't be at work Mm -hmm. long after i had my long-winded version there that's what i think companies actually should invest in that Mm -hmm. because when you look at the numbers and because i'm sorry i'm talking too much but the numbers are that one in three canadians will be affected by a mental illness in their lifetime. One Mm -hmm. in three. It went down from one in five, okay? Which is a large number. So there's three of us in this studio right now. One in three, okay. And then every single week, over 500,000 Canadians call in for a mental health issue. Do you know that costs over $1 billion? Mm -hmm. And this is, again, when I'm doing my presentations uh, for people on mental health. These are numbers that are very staggering. So one in three, that could be anybody it can affect, 
over a billion dollars and then over five over half a million people call in mm. because of mental illness and so that's a number that is very real and what can we do to change that mm. so i think they they should invest so so <clears throat> said so much a couple things the first thing is that i think that from a starting point um and this is very telltale in fact i had a similar conversation where i started from a different location than someone else did mentally right when it comes to addressing or examining the topic it's happened last week the when it comes to things for instance like offering people education right on uh, mental health I think that that doesn't cost you very much, and there's probably a really good argument to be made to doing it, right? But I think that in my mind, I separate that in some manner from the idea of safeguarding, right? So when I hear the word safeguard, that I interpret that to mean, potentially incorrectly, right? I interpret that to mean that the, the employer or your workplace is responsible in some way for safeguarding your mental health, Right? Um, which I'm not sure is a burden that they should be expected to carry. But they have to safeguard my physical health <laughs> too, you see, right? Well, you they do. And in, in many ways, your mental health is no less physical, right? It's it's just your brain, not your arm, right? But mm-hmm. and and I and so I, again I can get behind that, right? I really like the I really like the argument you made though, and it's something that it escaped my um kind of uh examination of the topic initially, which is that there's a huge economic incentive in, to make sure that the workplace in some way is, uh, you know, psychologically healthy, right? I don't know if I would use the word safe, but I know that's the word they use, right? But uh, I, I find the, the claim psychologically safe a specious uh, terminology. Uh, but well, uh, What about physical safe? Physical safety, same thing. Like they have to make it a certain... I think safe is the way that they explain it because they talk about physical safety and then mental safety. So that's how they... No, and, and I get that, but I think that physical safety is a little bit easier to uh, parse and mm-hmm. clarify what is meant. Uh, because, because you can see it's, it's more not, tangible, obviously. Well, it's not even just more tangible. It is more universalizable, right? So mm-hmm. if I cut your arm or it gets cut, it is very unlikely that there's going to be anyone in the workplace who experiences that differently, mm-hmm. right? But... The human brain and our conscious experience mm-hmm. um, is so varied, individualistic, th- very, very individualistic mm-hmm. that that it's almost it's almost comical to make the claim that you could create a workplace that would actually that would even be remotely capable of tailoring itself to the individual psychological needs of every employee in a way that would be safe. I don't think that's possible. But that's why they use those right? thirteen factors, and then they break that down from what you can choose from or what it would look Mm -hmm. like in your own work environment. Like what is work-life balance look like at a mom and pop shop or say a 24 seven operation? Oh no, totally. Right. Like I get it. Right. Again, I think that you could, again, I'm just, I'm just taking something to the terminology. Right. I, I like the idea of psychologically healthy. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of that. I think that the word safe is kind of overused now and it's like, well, exactly what could be safe about a a certain workplace. Some Mm -hmm. workplaces actually cannot be made safe. Right. Um, You know, there, I've had jobs that cannot be made safe. Wow. Right. Um, I've had I've occupied positions in our current job that cannot be made safe. And so it's one of these things, again, where in many ways there's a presumptuousness mm-hmm. to uh, that's usually recommended by people who don't do dangerous jobs that every workplace can be made safe, which is not true. Right. Um, and so I'm not saying that striving towards something like that would not even be beneficial for the business because there's an economic incentive to lost hours, as you mentioned. Right. Like mm-hmm. people call in all the time for. You know, they say they're sick or they're taking a sick day, but it's not a physical sickness. It's a, yeah. it's a mental uh, issue. They're dealing with their mental health problem. The problem, right? I totally understand that. I, get, I can totally get behind that, right? So there's a huge economic incentive that they should do. It would generally be good for morale. That will produce better, produ- or produce better um, uh, employees, more dedicated employees, more efficient employees, more productive ones. Um, so I can, I can get behind that. I think that the reason why I started off from a very different point, though, from like where you were, which I don't disagree with your point, was that I thought in some way that individuals should first and foremost be responsible for their own health and safety, right? Yes. Now, you may be in a workplace that is going to put you through the ringer, right? And Or maybe there are things they could do that are obvious, small things here and there, right? And they could, it may even be plenty of those 13 things are like that, right? Absolutely, they could be. Um, and so we would all benefit from doing that. But I think that the reason why I kind of started from a different point is that 
I'm not so sure that because I would recommend or suggest that a business would do that, that that makes them responsible for doing it, right? And I think that's kind of where I, I, I view it a little bit differently. And then I'm not even saying that when, with respect to other people. I'm, I'm saying it with respect to myself even, right? Mm-hmm. And so if I feel that way about myself, I'm sure other people feel that way about themselves too, which is I do not rely on my employer f- to safeguard my, my mental or physical health, right? Okay. Um, and so it would be nice if they did, right? I right. would love it if they did, but I actually, to, to an extent, feel like it's my responsibility, right? And I agree with you on that yeah. too, because I believe that it's actually listed under the Occupational Health and Safety Act so that they have to have a physical uh, safe work environment for sure. Mm-hmm. And if you feel that, you have the right to refuse work mm-hmm. if it's unsafe, for example. Mm-hmm. Uh, and for sure, like when I do presentations, I'm not expecting work to be 100% responsible. Mm. They have like the offer where you can contact the therapist yeah. or we want to ensure if you feel like that's not enough sessions, please find one on your own. And they, Because again, they are not... 100% responsible to take care of me mm-hmm. even when I'm not at work. Mm-hmm. That's also on me to do that too. Like mm-hmm. I practice self-care or if I meditate or if I go and have a therapist on the side, mm-hmm. of course. But I think that at least there should be something that is in place mm-hmm. to help or to get someone on their feet to know where to go. Because mm-hmm. sometimes people don't know. Like I mentioned, I'm going through a divorce. I don't know where would I even yeah, find yeah. like a therapist to talk about a divorce mm-hmm. and I'm so lost right now. So at least work's like, oh, call this number that we have and you're able to then contact with someone and then you are on your own. Mm. But at least something yeah. existed to assist me, but not 100%. It's not like I'm having a bad day. What would you like me to do about that every day or something? It's mm-hmm. I have to also be responsible for myself as an individual. So I take the measures, mm-hmm. but I would like there also to be measures in place too, especially in some certain work environments yeah. where I think it's a requirement. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I think, I, you know, I think I... No, I don't think that I agree with you. I do agree with you. <laughs> yeah, I, don't. I do agree with you. I uh, I think that the reason um, I think the the reason why I kind of just have this uh, sort of reticence is that in some way I remain unconvinced that a business is even competent enough to do that. Right? Um, I have worked many jobs in my life, and I currently occupy a position with people that are very well paid, and many of which are very well educated, and many more even well intentioned. And I'm not sure that I would, um, I would believe for a second that any of them are equipped to do any of the things that you're talking about, right? And I'm not saying that means lack uh, of training, maybe. Yeah, it could be that, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I can totally get behind uh, offering information, mm-hmm. education, um, pointing people in the right direction to resources, things like that. Um, but I think that, um, I think that again, I. I not that I'm doing this correctly, but I think that I think that I'm starting. I started from a point where I'm still not entirely sure that means that they should be responsible for doing it, right? Like, I, it would be awesome if they did it, but I don't think it's a, it's an impetus, right? Like, I don't think they should be necessarily. If I were a business owner, I would probably invest in that because mm-hmm. I am I am somewhat familiar with how much time is lost and how much money is lost because of those missed hours, uh, whether it's inefficiencies with someone's at work or they're absent work, right? Um, you know, happy, healthy people are better producers, right? So I would prioritize that. Mm-hmm. But I think that I'm viewing, I'm trying my best, perhaps c- incorrectly, to view it as a more abstract thing where mm-hmm. I go, should businesses in general be responsible for that? And I just don't know if that's a, I don't know, sure, I'm not sure that's something that you can ask them to take on. For sure, uh, but, but I could be wrong. Asking about responsibility, it just asks about safeguarding, and I think that something should be in place mm. at a business. So when I walk in, I know, like for example, there's a zero tolerance policy on things like even like bullying mm. or harassment, because mm. all of that. Would you say exactly? <laughs> see, fighting words. So if that if those don't exist, and think about that harassment policies, like we're talking about bullying or like mental harassment. If those policies are not in existence, like my mental health is not being safeguarded. So mm. I went to you. I was like, hey, Matt, this guy's calling me all kinds of names under the sun. And he's mm. like, and, and we don't have a policy for that. Too bad. So get thicker skin. And that's mm. a concern. So I'm like, okay, you don't have a harassment policy here? And I'm not saying it's physical. Yeah. Because okay, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. not physical sure. safety. Yeah. But even just when someone's like calling you names and mm. being derogatory, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. even a harassment policy should exist. And that would safeguard my mental health. So if I came to you that someone's making these mm. accusations or saying things about me mm-hmm. and you're like, well, we never had that problem here before. Maybe mm. it's you that I'm not safe in this work environment. Yeah. And you that's know, the, kind of an example. Yeah. That's actually a really clear example, right? It's actually a very clear and uh, example of something that's very obvious mm-hmm. about how in which way a very commonplace policy 
that probably wouldn't surprise anybody if it were in any workplace. In fact, it probably should be in every workplace. Exactly, and that's uh, what you safeguard. safeguard. That's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, and that just hadn't even occurred to me how obvious that was. Exactly, yeah, and that's, that's why harassment policies are written that way. Because mm-hmm. again, it's like if it's mental abuse yes. and psychological abuse, mm-hmm. that's your mental health being affected. Mm-hmm. So imagine you go to work every day and you're like, oh, here comes that chick. She's so fat. Or they make all these comments about mm-hmm. you. Oh, yeah, nice clothes, Tilo. Where'd you shop at the Value Village? And all the stuff they can say to you, like, Tilo, pour your heart out, guys. <laughs> I just want to put my rocks in this corner. So if that doesn't exist, then I'm not safe being in that workplace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so okay. something should I understand be that. there. Fair okay, so that's another, no, that's cool. I guess, maybe a more basic example. Yeah, I'm like supposed to be like, hey, everyone, we're going to do yoga today. That might not be possible, okay? I'm not saying self-care is happening at my <laughs> job or... But even just having things written on paper, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I have some sort of recourse. Okay. So I know I can turn to someone fair and say, enough. hey, I'm being abused mentally yeah, by people. Enough. Here's examples. Mm. Oh, harassment, that doesn't exist in my life. Mm-hmm. No, the fair enough. A good point. But for now, unfortunately, yeah, we are I going to have like to cut it. I know. But no, that was that was a good one. I like that. Cut like it that. out. I like that. That was good. Um, I think it was great. But yeah, we'll take a break. We will. And we'll be back for the I know everyone's sad. The last <sighs> session was At least there is some fat for, fire. <laughs> for, yeah. for this uh this deep dive. Yeah, excuse me while I get a ten. See you soon. See ya. <laughs>